Hello. Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And today we are painting some Malifaux. We are painting some more Malifaux. So two weeks ago we painted Malifaux. Uh, we painted, uh, who do we, we painted Anya. Anya's box. Like Karen. You have uh, the cards. Karen and Winston Finnegan. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think Leona has them on the webcam. I do, yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Do, 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 do. Is that copyrighted music? Not if I just do the three. If you do less than 20 seconds, we're all Okay, perfect. <laughs> Josh, oh, Colin Dora calls, Rohan answers. Yes, yeah. I'm wearing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Excellent. So, yep, there we go. Uh, we have Anya McCarran. Oh, where's my finger coming into the shot? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, and uh, Winston Finnegan. So, but today we're painting uh, models from the English Ivan core box. Ooh. So the guy who leads this group is called English Ivan. Is he English? He is neither English nor is his name Ivan. Well, that's just I it not with it. Ivan. Well, in <laughs> people, people call him English Ivan. Oh. Just like people call me Aussie Dave, right? Yeah, all when, the time. When clearly I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so uh, but English Ivan, no, he, that's a nickname that he has. Gotcha. That's, All right, uh, cool. Uh, that's that's what I read in the the law on the uh, Malifaux website. I did a little bit of prep, just a tiny, tiny bit. Just a little bit. Yep. But uh, just enough to find out that some of the models in this are super cool. Well, actually, all the models in this mm -hmm. are super cool. But yeah, English Ivan is um, is this guy here with the. Uh, I don't know if that's a bowler hat or a. Tr it's not a trilby. What's the other? It's not a trilby. No, it's not. What's, that. The, what's, the, what's the, There is another round hat that's. I think it's a little nope, bit different. Nope, I only know one round hat. Okay. <laughs> Just a bowler. That's all. Let's that go exists. with a bowler then. It's a bowler. Oh. And uh, yeah, so there are some other very cool characters in there, and you are painting. I'm painting Gibson DeWalt. Gibson DeWalt. Of the uh, the famous tool manufacturers. Yes, he has some really cool. He looks like he invented some cool things to do a lot of interesting things. Yep. Tools for the job. That's what his. Uh, One of his special rules. Yeah. Cool. Oh, sorry. It's like a mechanic. Makes cool things. So this is uh, English Ivan here, and Gibson Dewalt. Yep. Good thing I have some good old tinny tin over here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and some brassy brass. Brassy brass, yeah. Excellent. We're gonna get steampunk with it. That's cool. So we're gonna do that. Um, we have English Ivan there. Uh, and I also have some of the um, the Davas, I guess. Ooh. Who are kind of like uh, like Slender Man. That's creepy. They are super creepy. So I have some of those that will assemble during the show just to uh, do that and talk about the fun that is assembling Malifaux Minis. And I have a wonderful example of another mini that has, from Games Workshop, that I assembled recently, that has a Malifaux type part. As in, a part that's really small, and you look at it and go, why? <laughs> so, we'll have that. We'll I show forget that later. these actually have to all be put together, because I don't do that. Yeah, that's okay. I didn't do these either. We already did them all. Yes. <laughs> cool, so, we say love hi to you. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> in the chat uh, we have Mark uh, we have Josh Josh says he didn't paint anything this week he's working on hobby adjacent items still new painting station gaming table display solutions feeling heretical might slap together some iron warriors Ooh. this weekend so not now though uh, James is here hi James uh, Jason's here as well hello happy little painters <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is feeling good. Uh, we're feeling reasonably good, I think. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Betsy's here. Hey, Betsy. Uh, we have JT. Uh, Jason says the odd job hat. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the odd job hat. But uh, I said Gibson DeWalt, yellow and black. Are you going to paint him yellow and black? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so. I don't know. Yep. Oh, and Laser Judas says, watch out, don't let not wife Gretchen get hold of any axes. <laughs> we'll also discuss that later in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chaz is here. Andy Chesney, hello, 
everyone. Hello. Ooh, hello, hello. And uh, James is working on assembling uh, some Bones 5 miniatures from Reaper. It'd be Ooh. very cool. So I've got to see the, uh, the five-headed dragon from Reaper, the Bones dragon, which is huge. It comes in a box that I can't even, the camera doesn't go back this, far enough. To... That's crazy. That's bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. It's the size of this frame. So it's a great, uh, great big dragon, but it looks very cool. So I hope you're going to enjoy those, James. Nice. But uh, no, we had a little bit of uh, excitement before yeah. the show. The reason we're a little bit, yeah. starting a little <laughs> bit late. Oh, buddy, yeah. We, <laughs> so at my other job, we had the Take Shelter Now alarms go off um, through a tornado warning. So that was really fun in yep. a not fun way. Um, <laughs> yep. Absolutely no one took shelter. Um, I was immediately, when the, the alarms went off and my fiance came to pick me up from work, and then we had to drive in it, um, which was... We just have to say that there was no actual tornado. There was there no actual that we know. There were severe yes. um, yeah. the, We just had the conditions are um, perfect, and warnings usually happen when clouds start swirling. Um, so we didn't, we didn't see anything. Um, we just had, like all the alarms in the building start blaring in a delightfully <laughs> yeah, mildly terrifying <laughs> fashion <laughs> um, that's fair yeah. yeah i was lucky i was at home at the time yeah. and uh and i have no alarms in the house <laughs> they weren't going off nope i was told i was too calm they were like what are you doing and i was like well if the tornado comes i'll just go in that closet um, yep. I'm here. I can't be not here currently. <laughs> well, I, I work down in my basement, as many of you have seen on the yeah, You were already hangouts. safe. You were good to go. Well, I, I went upstairs oh, well, to open the door what, and step outside and check out the You're just like, oh, going. tornadoes. <laughs> yep. Um, so Mirror. that was exciting. Um, it was nice and flooding on our way back, and we couldn't see anything at all. So that was cool. No, it's never good when driving. Visibility yeah. is super important. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. Nice. I was uh, telling Leona earlier that I saw a fantastic... Um, oh, yeah, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 saw a fantastic meme uh, put out by a Midwest uh, weather service, um, which describes, like, talks about warnings and describes like uh, the, the, the difference between a tornado watch mm -hmm. and a tornado warning, but talking about it in terms that people could readily understand. Oh, was it the taco one? The taco watch <gasps> and the taco warning. Yes. <laughs> so taco watch is we have all the, um, all the things we need to make a taco and a tornado warning is we are having tacos now. Yes. And we have now. the warning and that was, that yep. was a, uh, that was an adventure. fun. It was. It was. <laughs> it was. It was exciting. We were having tacos. We were, we're having, having tacos. tacos. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Well, and literally, my my coworker had tacos, so I mean, <laughs> nice. it was a time. I had someone come up to me, and they're like, "Archon, you're from Tennessee. You know what to do for tornadoes." And I was like, "Wrong. I am from Louisiana, and I know what to do for hurricanes." <laughs> um, <laughs> I am not the leadership role you're looking for. Also, Excellent. I want to say hello to Gary. Thanks for joining. Oh, hey, and Gary. And also, Roger. Hello. And JT Excellent. says, I figured the excitement was over Gretchen's hoodie. I do like my hoodie. It's I bought true. it for my fiance, and then I stole it back. Um, <laughs> we started late because we were like, that hoodie's amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> we, did, we did actually spend like 10, 15 minutes just like talking about the hoodie. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, actually, I had my first moment as as someone in my 30s now getting to feel old because I wore this hoodie to work and my coworker, who is in his early 20s, asked what video game it was from. No. And I was wow. like, wow, that really started up quick, didn't it? <laughs> I was like, Bam, you're not, no, you are no longer a youth. <laughs> Good day, ma'am. <laughs> so. Like, all right. Yeah. Um. Wow. 
I'm, I'm sure you put them straight. Set them straight. Yeah, I was, I was like... Video game? There is a video, video game, game, technically. Sure. Like, what armor is that from? I played that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> That's terrible. But, uh... Okay. What else do we have? Um, oh, Laser Judas says they're working on painting their way through the Joan of Arc minis. For their buddy Derek Funkhauser. There are so many. There are a lot. There are a lot of the Joan of Arc minis in that game. That's from um, uh, Mythic Games. Oh. Joan of Arc. It's, they're all 15mm uh, scale. So they have a fantastic, there's a fantastic dragon in that one. Beautiful dragon. Campaign game? Hmm. No, it's a it's a board game. Time of Legends. Pardon? Time of Legends. Oh. I assume by Mythic Games. Yeah, I think so. It's Good set bet amid the tumult. Tumult? Tumult. Sorry. Y you're saying words that I'm not understanding. <laughs> it's okay. I'll stop talking. It's because Let's I'm stop. English, Ivan. Remember? <laughs> yes. Back to the chat. <laughs> Back to the chat. Cool. Uh, excellent. Liz just says, uh, our tornado siren is at the school behind our house that I can hit with a thrown rock. It's loud. Yeah. We don't have tornado sirens. We just have um, all the news stations to switch to a, a map, a radar map of the weather. Um, Betsy says, hey, Roger. Yay, I'm in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I hear you with the hurricanes, for sure. Uh, she just says Tennessee doesn't get many tornadoes because the mountains tend to break up that nonsense. Um, however, west, western Tennessee. Isn't that kind of flat? Yeah. And then the pressure differential. Pardon? And then like the pressure differential. Yeah. Between the mountains actually like increases it, right? It can be, it can be tough. I got friends who live in uh, Memphis um. and they're sort of every summer there's like three or four tornado warnings. But, uh, yes, what do we got? Uh, JT says, almost done with the Nemesis base game minis. All intruders complete. Just need to finish the characters. Um, Joshua says, the Joan of Arc minis are amazing. Wish they would sell the figures separately for use in tabletop war games. That would be great. Uh, and Jason is working on a raging troll. Still on some growls. It's <laughs> green, except in my wallet. I hear you. I Fair just, enough. I just bought a new army the other day. <laughs> I will not have green in my wallet for some time. But that's what it's there for, right? One of the things it's there for. Sure. Yes. Why not? But no. Cool. That's good. Well, we're glad everybody's safe. And painting or watching a show about painting. It's good to have you all. Nice. Of course I chose this guy. <laughs> I got in here first. I chose him because he is all brown. So I get to use my favorite color. Charred brown. Charred brown. So that'll be good. Except of course for his uh, collar and cuffs. Really well, gray. Obviously, gotta yeah. gotta break that up. Gotta fashion it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, I just noticed. So he's actually he's wearing gloves as well, and those gloves are brown. Yes, the gloves are brown. So quite cool. Do you think you might do some work on the the cape, some texture or something? I'll do some texture. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's, uh, it doesn't look like it's leather, but it does look like it's, um, like a heavy wool fabric. So I will try and do that. So lots of little, uh, cross hatching to get that texture on there. Andrew says, I just finished a new Blood Bowl team. Excellent. Painting pumpkin heads is fun. <laughs> James says, I live, I live in Louisville, and we get tornadoes, yep. and I've lived in Florida. For the hurricanes. For the hurricanes. Hi, Ryan. Excellent. Hey, Ryan. Welcome. These, These minis, minis are, are from... From... Bum, bum. Oh. I've Melvo. 
Yep, for Malifo, the English Ivan Core box. So, ah, oh. there you go. That's what we're painting today. And they're specifically part of the Syndicate crew. Yep. So the uh, the blue. I think it's uh, the symbol is the um. Yep, the Explorer Society. Is oh, there? okay. Yes, but it is the Their Syndicate, faction. right? Uh, no, they it, they don't have Syndicate as their. Uh, these guys don't have Syndicate as one of their keywords. Oh. They have Umbra. Huh. Which means shadow, I think. Yeah. But. Uh, gotcha. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. Last I think last time around the um. So yeah, the so the the folks that we painted last time had the Syndicate keyword. But yeah. Okay, so they're Umbra and they're yep. the Explorers. Yeah, so they're all part of the Explorer Society. That's their overall faction. Gotcha. But then their keywords are slightly different, so you can you get benefits for running models with the same keywords. Gotcha. Wow. Yep. But you don't. I do I, remember that. Yeah, I think you don't have to run them with the same keywords, but you you do get okay. benefits if you do. You get so. different bonuses. Yeah. Josh Potter says I invested. In new glasses, that's fair. No new toys for a One while. One day I'll have glasses. Right. <laughs> also fair. Today's not that day. <laughs> Today is not that day. But like, actually, we want it to be the opposite. <laughs> we want it to be that day. August nineteenth is when I find out whether I need new glasses or not. Oh, nice. <laughs> so. Uh, also, hello, Sean. Thanks for joining. Cool. Excellent. Hey, Sean. Oh, and Josh is now in Ashland, Kentucky. Nice. So. Also, you don't feel like you have to say your location if you don't want to. What's that? <laughs> I said it, to people in the chat, like, you don't have to say your location if you don't want to. <laughs> no, no, everybody has to say their location. No. <laughs> their, their complete address and their social security number. Yeah. <laughs> Laser Judas handy. says, maybe the gloves are deep, deep purple that make them look brown oh okay Ooh. <laughs> also i feel like if your parents named you english ivan <laughs> the chances of you becoming a villain are pretty high <laughs> this is true yep i am i'm actually like gonna <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually gonna take that uh that idea from laser judas there and uh just mix that into the Sorry, there was just a little, uh, little nub at the top of the. Try hat. to. Yeah. Put this guy's beard on his face and not anywhere else. Not anywhere else. <laughs> yep. That's good because generally beards <laughs> exist in this facial area. Oh. I guess it doesn't have to, but. I'll just be they, glad if it's his, better if they do. <laughs> his hairline uh, stays all right during this experience. Right. I apologize in advance to this man. <laughs> well, of course, uh, English Ivan here has uh, his hat pulled down low and his hand up in front of, in front of his face. Obviously, he doesn't want to be doesn't want to be seen, but means that I can't quite tell whether he has um, what kind of hairstyle he has. This guy definitely has mutton no, not really, but he's grey. He's grey there. I'll have to go back yeah. and grey him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. It'll, it'll be good. fine. It'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Also, it looks like Ryan has uh, Lady Justice if he ever gets to play. Okay. I have three editions of the starters and I've yet to play. That's fair. Right. Oh, it's been a yeah. year. <laughs> it's a, it's a cool game. I like, uh, I like Malifaux. The, um, Plus the biggest one thing. one soul stone to hire outside the keyword. Oh, so it's sometimes it'll actually cost you more. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So each of them have a, have a soul, a cost in soul stones. So you can see English Ivan here has cost of 15. The, um, Whereas Winston Finnegan is only eight. So he's like 
just a little bit more than half as good as uh, English Ivan. But uh, yes, yeah, so, okay, so yeah, so if I so if I took English Ivan and paid fifteen for him, and then wanted to take a Surveyor instead of him being six soul stones, he'd be seven. Mm. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That is good to know. Give this oh, guy Roger is still working on the models from Monumental. So we'll have to wait another week or two to see those. <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on you there, Roger. But we're excited to see them. Uh, okay. Excellent. Were you going to say something, Roger? No, I think I was mumbling to myself as I'm trying to make this gray hair. Okay. It's all fair. It's all fair. Are you mixing or are you just going with a... I'm just going with a gray and then I'm going to do a little bit of white. Um, because he has dark hair. Okay. So I'm going for that salt and pepper vibe. It's not currently awful. Right. And that is, that is always my goal. That's it's not good. awful. Yep. Also, I feel like if I completely, completely mess up, I can just go back over at the black. <laughs> 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 cool. Okay, I'm just going to do something <laughs> quite strange. I'm taking the mini off the off the base because the um, I glued him on right before the show, and he uh, snapped off. Oh no! But didn't snap off, but the the glue um, didn't work. As well as I was hoping. I found him a bit difficult. Right. The glue. Okay. Um, also, maybe you could talk about this a little bit. Oh, about assembling uh, uh, Malifaux minis? Yeah. Well, like the issue that I came up with, that I came across, and also maybe hear from Gretchen and hear what she would have done. Basically, the shoe okay. had was attached... Oh, that was the, the attachment to point to the... Correct. Right. Um, to the plastic, what do yeah. they call that thing? The sprue. The sprue? Yeah. And because of that, there was like a nub. And right. I'm trying to scrape, and I'm trying to scrape, but it's really hard. And they... Yeah. I just had a bump. So basically, he doesn't stand up straight. Like the other guy, Gretchen's guy, yep. I could get him to stand without even glue like having glue right and i thought your guy could do that with but no yeah with, with that sort of thing um the when you have those those nubs and you clip them off you just uh you need to just carefully use a Fail. sharp hobby knife okay to kind of trim that off and um clean that up a little bit i it's, was using uh, the clippers Yep. It's like a safer, safer hobby knife. <laughs> okay. I've had some bad experiences with those. With hobby knives? Yes. That's fair. That's fair. And by um, bad experience, I mean I cut my finger. Yeah. We we'll probably um, we should pick up uh, some files as well, because you can use files instead. Oh, true, true, true. They take okay. a little bit longer, but they um, they do work as well but uh so there we go i've got his mustache in nice and early on the show <laughs> <laughs> i cool. like that you both got the facial hair <laughs> yeah set if you, you know how to do it i think also i'm going to step away from his uh his eye patch not quite eye patch kind of um monocle thing looks like it has black leather but i kind of wanted to stand out a little bit more so i think i'm gonna go and see about maybe doing a brown and then give it more of a bronze look so it matches with his uh no somebody's tool belt yeah cool make it look a little bit more like he made it himself yeah because he probably did for sure okay Looking back at the chat, uh, excellent. Oh, James talking about the pirate ship from, I'm guessing that's the one from Reaper Bones 5. Uh, so it's huge, 45 inches long 
and eight inches wide, almost four foot long, wow. miniature pirate ship. That is amazing, amazing, absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> I just said I tried to do mutton chops, but I couldn't pull it off, so I just grew pork chops instead. <laughs> I grew pork belly. Pork belly. Excellent. Uh, oh, Josh says now we have a severe thunderstorm rolling in. You're welcome. We, we sent it on a big loop. Came across Baltimore, <laughs> west to east, and we <laughs> sent it on a loop right around Philly and down to. Well, there's some in New there. York too, I know. Yeah. Like a whole little chain of uh, <laughs> thunderstorms. Excellent. Uh, and Roger says uh, he thinks it's going to be longer than a couple of weeks. So, oh well, we'll be patient. We'll be patient, Roger. We are looking forward to seeing them, though. Excellent. Um, yep, both Sean and Jason, they're saying, yeah, I can always hit it with a nail file or emery board. Excellent. Cool. So, because there is so much um, sort of brown on this guy, all of his, uh, most of his outfit is brown, I am going to go with those purple gloves. I like that idea. Just that to break that up a little idea. bit. And I might throw a little bit more, rather than going with sort of the brown for highlighting. So, of course, I'm using uh, charred brown for the base color, but I'm mixing in some uh, beige brown for the, the highlights. But I think for the um, for his pants, I might mix in some uh, gray into those to so give it a different um, different angle. So at the moment, it's doing a, a mix, which is probably 70-30 charred brown to uh, beige brown <laughs> and doing a some basic highlighting some fairly quick over the whole area and then I'll get into the the texturing with the next um, next pass next set of highlights I think that'll be the way to go yeah so far I like how this guy's coming along yeah yeah does he have a fun mix of uh of clothing or is it all uh, is he in like a suit as well he's in a suit okay I say say what you will about the uh, the folks in the Explorer Society they they do like their suits they do dress very well they are well tailored cool that's got his good. eyebrow on right the first time that's nice wait you're doing eyebrows already just one eyebrow. His other eye is kind of completely covered. Which eyebrow is it? Is it this eyebrow? Or is it this eyebrow? It's the left eyebrow. I cannot this raise one. my eyebrows. <laughs> I lack that skill. My uh, eldest daughter, Emily, was quite excited the other day. She, um, Did she discover she can raise eyebrows? Yep, she learned she can uh, raise her left eyebrow. And she was like, hey, Dad, check this out. And I went, that's great. Can you do this? Switch to the right, and there we go. She's like, oh no. I said, that's okay, you got time, you can practice. Plenty of time to practice. So, we'll be all good. We'll be family of eyebrow raises. Sounds like a time. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. That will be good. Cool. But uh, yeah, one of the things that I saw you mention at the beginning of the show was axe throwing. You did. Dun, dun. Um, so I thought I'd bring that up again, <laughs> just because you managed to avoid talking about it. <laughs> um, so what people were talking about is I went, I went uh, axe throwing for my bachelorette party, and it was great. Um, I went to a place called Stumpy's in Towson, Maryland. 
cool. Nice. Um, if anyone... That's near me. Yeah, you should go. Throw an axe. I should. <laughs> so it was bring your own booze. Oh. And, <laughs> and um, it was it was a really fun time. They had us all in like kind of a private little corner room. Is it right? Is it right next to the patient first? Nope. Oh, it should be. It should totally be. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Um, and, room. and we went axe throwing, and it was a really fun time. Um, I feel like I did a good job. Um, it was a learning curve. Um, <laughs> like, I definitely kind of felt like you had to get um, a, a rhythm. Because, like, they bring you in, and the, the worker there who's, like, cheating because he gets to work there. Right. Um, it's like, here's how you throw an axe. You stick your arm out. You make sure that, you know, you're stepping correctly. And then you throw the axe. And, you know, it goes, yep. sticks where it's supposed to stick. Um, <laughs> and he's and like, it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> and we found out, and a lot of the people that went with me were fellow swordsmen and women that I'm close friends with. And we found out very quickly, um, one, we're all competitive, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> and from dealing with other weapons, we, we could not deal with the, the shame of not being able to throw an axe no, properly. Okay. <laughs> uh, and two... All of us have really good aim, but really poor edge alignment when it comes to throwing an axe. So we would hit the bullseye with the axe, yep. sometimes rather aggressively, right. <laughs> but the axe wouldn't actually stick because we weren't on that edge. Because it, it had oh. turned by then. So yeah. yeah, by then it had had too many rotations. All oh, right. Because okay. the yeah. trick to getting it to stick is making sure the rotations are right. Yep. So, um... We learned that we might not be able to throw an axe and stick it into an enemy, but we could concuss them real quick. Okay. <laughs> we were on point with our... With, we, we hit the bullseye. Hit <laughs> like, with we, your concussive techniques. We had to get a new target nice. at one point, not from hitting the bullseye with the axe edge on, but from the just... It was already kind of torn up, and we just completed the job. Right. Um, but I did hit the bullseye by throwing it. I did get a stick. I, like, I was able to kind of uh, learn with it. I was very proud of myself. I was like, I have learned a new skill today. Excellent. I have taken a level in axe throwing. Um, <laughs> awesome. Powered up. I don't know when I'll need this in the future. But I feel like if I go to a Ren Fair, I might be able to win a prize. Cool. Ooh. That'd be nice. Yeah. I was We're like, yeah. this year. You win one of those stuffed dragons? That'd be cool. I really, you know what I want to do so bad? What's that? I want to learn how to... Pri it's all in the technique, so I know I don't need a lot of muscle. I want to learn how to hit the thing that tells you that the strongman thing that they have. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. At the Ren Fair. And I want to... I just want to, like, prance up to it and just... Ding! <laughs> right. Yeah. Get it first time. <laughs> And you can you can tell how you can tell how much Gretchen really wants to learn how to do that because of the wistfulness. Yeah. Hey, you know what I want to. When, I just wanna, just, it was like, it's all the that burly men. It's that is all the burly <laughs> men. Every time I pass it at the Ren Fair, hear me out. Every yep. time I pass it at the Ren Fair, it's all these big guys, and they're all like, Rawr. and then they go, and it's not about strength. It's about where yeah, you I hit think. it and the dynamics that you use, yeah. right? Yep. And most of them don't know that. So they're just like wailing on it and they can't get the little thing to ding up and it's just your big burly men. And I, I want to just like twirl around up to it and just... Because I've heard... Hit it with a little ammo. Yeah. I've heard that it's, <laughs> that it's the way that you... Which I think... It's the way you hit it and where you hit it on the target. Yeah. 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 Like the way that you slug, like, like the way that you move. And I just want to learn how just for that moment. For no like other reason. I just, I just want to show up a bunch of big, angry, burly men. And then right. I want to prance away, never to be seen again. <laughs> I... Hey, dude, remember that time that she showed you up? <laughs> Shut up. Oh, I, have, I have no other wants in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to have goals, right? Yes. Yep. Um, goals of all sorts. That's cool. But yeah, I learned I can axe throw, so that was cool. Excellent. Uh, and then I go horseback riding this weekend, so, you know, it's a fun time. Excellent. Um, it sounds like you are busy, busy, busy. 
yeah, you know, if uh, if the COVID things get under control, a lot of tournaments mm -hmm. are starting to open back up. So. Oh, so it's tournaments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this year, we're trying to get back into the swing of things, both literally and metaphorically. Right. Just, uh, I couldn't compete. The... Yeah, I couldn't compete last year because I was uh, I broke my foot, and then we had the right. pandemic. So it was a. Uh, Good opportunity to get back in. Yep. Excellent. No axe throwing at tournaments, though. That's. Well, now you're gonna have to look for axe throwing locations near every tournament, right? Yeah. So it's like go to the tournament. At the end of the day, hey, who's coming axe throwing? Bring your own booze. <laughs> I'm sure that they'll all be up for that. So we got. Uh, Okay. Trying so hard not to get blue paint on this man's mm -hmm. uh, beard that I just painted. His beautiful beard. <laughs> Sorry, I saw um, Jason's coming. Jason also picked up on me saying they were well tailored. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but it's a super important question. Did anyone dual throw the axe? So, <laughs> was here's, there any the dual here's the thing. <laughs> I thought amazing. of that. I thought of it. I thought of you all. But it was against the rules, big time. <laughs> oh, really? That's a shame. Yes. No no dual wielding, no trick throws. Um, What's a trick throw? Like throwing, like, what? I don't your... know. I wouldn't like be able behind. to do it. <laughs> Maybe behind? Yeah. yeah, just close your eyes and just <laughs> wing just it. Hope for the best. Um, but wow. uh, yeah, it was a fun time. I recommend it. Go axe throwing if you have a place near you. You should do it. Cool. That does sound like fun. I think there's one down in Baltimore near um, Union Brewing. Like yes, when I say near, it's like is. right next to it. Yeah, hmm. I know it. I know exactly where there's. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I would love to go. Hmm? Also near Union, there's an ice cream place. That's really good, by the way. <laughs> oh, in Patterson Park. Oh no, I'm thinking of a different. Do they have two? Locations? Anything can be more licks, because that is a great ice cream place. Yes, I'm thinking of that. Cool. Sorry, yeah. relatable content right here. Nathan, <laughs> and I are talking about ice cream places. Ice cream places, local ice cream places. Hey, now after you're done drinking and throwing axes, yeah. <laughs> what else do you want to do other than you know go and uh, have some cream? nice ice cream? That's what I do. Andrew says can confirm. Gretchen did <laughs> hit a target. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Did they show you the under? You were not allowed to do an underhanded throw. You were only allowed to do a one-handed overhanded throw and a two-handed overhanded throw. Right. Um. I'm not sure if it's because you went axe throwing, but on my Facebook feed there have been a lot of ads for like tiny axe throwing. <laughs> you buy a little kit that has like a bullseye, like oh a target this size, and the, the axes are about the size of like this paintbrush. Huh. It looks like this looks terrible and incredibly dangerous at the same time. <laughs> Bring back lawn darts. Why not, why not do that? <laughs> no. We want the danger. Well, lawn darts are dangerous. Or so I've heard. I've never actually seen them. They just sound terribly dangerous. Okay, so... I'm not sure if you can zoom in a little bit more there, Luna. Um, but you can kind of see on the. I'm getting a uh, doing a cross hatch pattern. So I've painted originally painted thin lines uh, this direction, so like that. And now I've turned the model, so it's not quite 90 degrees, and I'm painting some more. Thin um, lines down there, and doing that on the uh, to doing that for the highlighting. So along those folds, you can kind of see, you can see it there. 
Oh yeah, that looks good. So what I'll do um, now is I'm gonna mix a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of um, ivory in with the, the beige brown. And, you know, then do some final edge um, sort of patches. There. Are you only doing them on the highlight? Yeah, just in the highlight areas. Okay. So in the, the shadows, we're not, not getting that texture in the shadows. So I'm not trying to paint the whole thing as, um, with that uh, texture, just where it's gonna catch the light. It's typically where, you, where you'll see that, um, you see the texture of fabric. I think it's because naturally your eyes don't adjust on everything at the same time. So yeah. it kind of tricks you into putting that pattern everywhere yes. or your brain thinking that it's everywhere. Yep, yep, you're exactly right. Because if you do the whole thing, it can kind of uh, look actually more flat. Yep. Yep. Your brain definitely uh, definitely fills in the fills in the gaps there. Um. <laughs> Josh says, so axe throwing and drinking, just add some arson and larceny and you'll have the whole Viking experience. <laughs> and Andrew says, can either of you talk us through choosing between white, bone, and yellow mix for the brown highlights? Ooh, I think it depends what kind of brown you're trying to portray. Yep. Um, and what your lighting is, if you're, uh, or what you're... Yeah. Kind of... If you're going for a particular lighting source, uh, this one is just a, it's sort of a choice made for um because it's, it's colors that i use a, a lot uh so i know exactly sort of how it's going to look but it works well for a dark brown fabric um so I, everybody always knows i always go for charred brown as the as the starting color um i like charred brown because it has um a hint of purple and a hint of gray in there so you can use it across a fairly wide variety of like highlight colors. Um, if you wanted, if I wanted to make this brown jacket look like leather, um, rather than doing the crosshatch lines like I've got there, I'd probably stipple. And rather than using the um, uh, beige brown and the ivory, I'd use a, um, like a Caucasian skin color, like an orangey. Mm -hmm sort of skin color. I think um, the dwarf skin from the Vallejo game color range is a really good one for that. So I'd mix that in with the um, with the charred brown, so the dwarf skin color. And then I'd, as I said, yeah, I'd just be, rather than doing the cross hatches, I'd be stippling. So just putting little dots in there to give that worn, cracked leather look. But you could also use that dwarf skin to mix into black to um, highlight black leather um, but for for browns I'd go with that if you wanted a really sort of desaturated brown um, mixing some um, maybe not something as bright as the light gray Ooh, where is it there we go light gray I'd probably go for something like the basalt gray um, which I think you've got over I got do some over there. right here yep so I'd go from the charred brown up to I'd, I'd start mixing in basalt gray and then when I got towards the end, just to keep that little bit of warmth in it, I'd probably go back to a little bit of ivory. Um, I tend to avoid mixing white in as a highlight. Yeah. Unless it's for something that's very, um, gonna be very bright. Or, um, just not sure what I should do with his shoulder symbol there. It kind of looks like it's shining and glowing at the same time. So I'm not sure whether it's... It's supposed to be shiny or glowy. Shiny or glowy. Someone yeah, used exactly. the defuse button on their Photoshop. Fun. <laughs> Said someone used the defuse button on their Photoshop yeah. when they were coloring that in. So uh. I'll, have to, I'll have to work that out when I get back, get to that. But he does, um, he is carrying a, um, like a brand there, a, a torch. So I'm probably going to do that with a, um, like a pink fire. Okay. Give him some, some magical fire. Just so it matches a little bit with that um, uh, 
the coloration on his uh, shoulder icon. But uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if that um, if that helps you, Chaz. There, whether you uh, talk about going with the brown highlights, but uh, yeah, sometimes it's. Uh, sometimes we go through and we'll go, okay, well, if we've got a dark blue, we'll highlight that with a light blue or a lighter blue, so like sequential light blues, or sometimes it'll be um, grays. We'll start with black and work through the grays. But generally, it's it's to give a little bit more depth, mm -hmm. it's always fun to throw in a different color. I think, a too, different color. a fun thing that you can do is look up, um, like, photography online that has different... Not light sources, but light um, tones, like warmer tones or cooler tones, um, depending on how you kind of want your minis to look. Like if you're trying to get more of a dark grizzled kind of vibe, using a lot of cool tones is going to kind of bring that out a little bit more. And if you're looking for more of a happy sunny day vibe, then um, using a lot of warm colors is going to bring that that sunny kind of look. Yeah. And um, finding references that have those highlights on them already is going to give you a good indicator of um, kind of how whatever fabric or texture you're looking to portray creates those highlights and what colors they would be in that lighting. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a, definitely a good idea. For sure. One of the things I noticed just then is, as I was looking at it is that the... Um, the folds in here looked a little bit uh, shallow. So I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of a black and charred bone mix into some of those and thin it down for the, the flatter areas so it's almost like a glaze. What color should I make this guy's jacket? It's brown in the photos. Maybe, um, do, you have a, do you have a purple over there? I do have a purple. It's very bright purple. Hmm. I'd, I'd go with that. Hey, um, the boxes are right by you. Yeah, they're right by me. Oh, I can go digging if I want. want. <laughs> yeah. cool. um, the purple might look nice. Let's yeah. see if I can desaturate it a little bit. I think you can. I'm, uh, that's the, I think it's the same purple I'm going to be using. Oh, good, they'll match. With the, um, yeah. That's what Be I was thinking. Buddies. What do I end up? Oh, he's behind the thing there. Yeah, it's the same purple that I mixed in with um, the uh, the other guy last week, or the other, so the, two weeks ago. Finnegan, Winston Finnegan. So we'll have a pretty good crew looking. Good looking crew when we're finished. Good. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna mess around just a little, mix a little bit of purple in with the the charred brown here. So that's some charred brown, some purple. Just takes, uh, just gives us a little bit of something extra. I'll paint that on his uh, glove here. And on this glove as well. Just, how uh, the sick you them. do. Hmm? Are you asking how Leona is? Ooh. James said, how's sure, the sick yeah. dirt do? Yeah. I don't know if you're asking how Leona is or if you're asking about anyone's hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> how's my sick do? It's getting a little bit long. <laughs> what was that? Oh, uh, of the construction? I think um, we might uh, say that. Also, uh, we could ch chat about <laughs> minis from the group, too. Yeah, I think maybe if we look at photos from the group first, and okay. then we come back after that, I'll, um, I'll do some assembly. and. Oh, who and was the, the sick, sick one? one? It was me. Yep, it was Leona. So, but thankfully she's better. Yeah. You can mm. probably hear it in my voice. I still, like, have a little bit. I have a little bit of a cough, but... Just a tinge there. On Thursday, I literally could not 
do anything. <laughs> Could not talk. Yeah. No. It was like one of those colds that kill you. And honestly, I haven't been sick for like a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of forgot. <laughs> yep. You for, like, forgot how to be sick. what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. You need to lay down and like drink water. What is this? Or is that for, is that for the flu? What is, or is this that, horrible? Is that for a broken leg? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And more that... I feel like when you have more colds, you have a higher tolerance. Right, yeah. For, like, feeling crummy. I think you're right. But I actually was sick, so I'm glad that I didn't come in and, like, get Gretchen and Dave sick, because... Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate that. We do. Oh, Betsy says, we had that go around our house. It sucked. Yeah. Yeah, apparently... Like, I kind of thought I was the only one, but then, like, I talked to more people, and even people I don't live near at all (laughs) were getting sick, so that made me feel a little better. there's a little summer cold going around. Yeah. Yeah. But I I think it's definitely um, a thing, like, we've all avoided (laughs) avoided anything for the last 18 months. It's true. So, like, I think my immune system... And I'm not gonna lie. I I haven't been like eating vitamins and vitamin C <laughs> every day. <laughs> yep. Okay. I just um messing around with his uh, pants, adding a little bit of uh, gray and some purple to them. So really, oh, that's cool. stretching stretching the. Uh, the bounds of the child brown. So just painting that in there. And now just, I'll probably do like long strokes here rather than going for the same sort of fabric pattern or fabric um, texture on the, as the uh, overcoat. But I just need to make sure I'm not making it too bright. And it's starting to work. There we go. Very nice. Looking pretty cool on that leading leg there. Thankfully, most of it's in shadow under his coat, so I don't have to worry about too much of it. But yeah, should we have a look at uh, the photos from the group? I yes. think we should. Cool. So these are photos from last week, just so you know. Okay, so photos from uh, that were submitted last week, so... Got all those, you know, got those submitted and we not show them. So, uh, so photos submitted this week will appear next week? Uh, no. No? I just didn't have anybody submit photos. But you can in the group, if you're interested. August is just around the corner. And every month we do a new banner. Right. And so there's a, um, announcement post that if you'd like to be featured in the banner... Please comment a mini picture. Cool. <laughs> that will be good. So yeah, definitely uh, people comment on that post in the uh, Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group and we'll get a cool banner for Ooh, August. I want to do stuff with black light. Dave, let's do something with black light. <laughs> I don't that know. That is cool. That is cool. Everybody will see that I have terrible dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so... Everyone will see how much dog hair is on me at all times. Um. Fantastic. It's why I stopped going to clubs. But, um, but yeah, sorry, Betsy. Uh, this is uh, very cool. Airbrushed using the Turbo Dork uh, Turbo Shifts. Turbo Shift paints. Uh, brushed on fluorescence that for black light cool. effects. That does look super cool. That's, uh, yeah, just feels incredibly dangerous. But no, it looks uh, looks great. I love the um, the effects on the wings as well, of that uh, the way that those those paints look. Um, I will just quickly mention um, my buddy uh, Simon Berman uh, runs a group called uh, the Brush Wielders Union that I'm a member of, and uh, he does a monthly podcast. And this month he spoke with uh, Meredith Plasco, I think, who is one half of the Turbo Dork team. Ooh, so, uh, cool. 
if you want to um, hear about the uh, trials and tribulations of making paints and in the modern world, uh, you can go and check that out. But just have a look for uh, Brush Wielders Union on Facebook or on Patreon. But the uh, the podcast is available, I think, to to everybody. Now, Patreon subscribers uh, get it a couple of days early. But yeah, definitely a good chat. But uh, yeah, Betsy looks fantastic. Well done. I want to try it. I have not. You want to try the black light? I want to try the black light stuff. Okay. One day. <laughs> we'll do it. One day. Halloween. Would this do it for Halloween? <gasps> That'd be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Sorted. <laughs> Chris, excellent. Has this work in, uh, work in progress of a um, an awesome... I'm going to go for Paladin. You think she's a Paladin? I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I'm really liking the... Normally I don't. I'm not a bit, normally I'm not a big fan of the uh, sort of the colored metallics, but it worked really well on uh, Bessie's Dragon. I think it's working really well here on uh, Chris's armor. Yeah. That's looking, uh, looking quite cool. Nice work, Chris. She's looking great. The whole Chris Sheen. Is that a tort? Is it a total? I don't know, but I I like his yeah. facial expression so much. I appreciate yep. the green eyes because I think it brings out the sculpt of that face. Yeah. So delightfully. Yeah. <laughs> I it's it's a mix between just like delightful anger and a little bit of silliness in yeah. that facial expression, and I don't know if I would be scared or like entertained by fighting this creature. Yep. <laughs> I, I have many questions about the, um, well, one of the things I'm going to say is that I really, really, really love the work on the, the sun on the top of the staff. Oh, yeah. But I do have questions about the, um, like the clothing, the way that the Thortle is clothed. And it's like it has sleeves. So can it separate from the <laughs> shell and put on a shirt? Well, no, no. The sleeves, I think, connect to whatever the, uh, that harness is. He, he could just... Pull them up and connect them to the harness. Yeah. I mean, my next question would be why, but to protect yeah. his arms from the fire. Yeah. Keep it protected. It's, it's like asbestos sleeves. <laughs> and like in an artistic sense, yeah. I, I absolutely. I know. As I mentioned, the eyes, but I like how it, your eyes travel from the sun to his expression to the flames, and then that little bit of green in the eyeballs brings you back down to the uh, the green on the base. The face, yeah. It does look great. Excellent work, Chris. Great choices. Oh, Dave Hummel has been painting up some Tech Marines. The Shadow Hawks Company. These are looking very cool. Ooh. That uh, Tech Marine on the left there has some sort of crazy arm with a massive gun on it. It looks awesome. Looking very good, Dave. I'm very excited to uh, need to take. Oh, sorry. Need to come back for a second. Um, Dave needs to take a. Uh, I think you need to take a big army shot now, because I know that you have a lot of Space Marines that are painted. We want to see all of them. That would be uh, be very cool. Sweet, cool, nice one. Oh, Garrett is painting up a mind. It's a mind flayer. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yep. Ooh. But uh, yeah, this is looking uh, looking very cool. I, I love the pose. There's a very Doctor Strange kind of thing going on. Yes. But, um, but yeah, I'm loving that purple. That purple's looking really good. And I also like that you've gone with the red and the blue. So you've got that sort of triad of, of colors that are all close to each other on the color wheel. It's looking really, really neat. So my next question is, what color are you going to go for the, like, the wrappings on the arms, the, the, mm. uh, the pants? So many questions. I'm yeah, excited to see how this uh, <laughs> this comes along, Garrett. It'll be very cool. I like it. Oh, Kevin Williams has painted up a uh, this is a Dark Angels uh, Terminator from uh, the Horus Heresy. So they have uh, black armor with red and uh, sort of white trim. But uh, yeah, so it's looking really nice there. I think one of the things I really like is the way that you've tied the model in with the base using those um, uh, pigments, so those rust-colored pigments there, dusting them up onto the, sort of over some of that iconography on, and on the feet. Looks great, Gavin. Nice work. Very cool. Oh, 
Graham. Excellent. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen something from Graham. This is a 3D resin print from the Adventurer's Guild. Ooh. Now, this is definitely a paladin, right? I think so. Yeah. I really love the chunky highlights on that fabric. Right. Yep. It almost has a very, like, illustrate. Like, this could be on the wall of a of some old, like, artifact. You just see that guy there. Like a cathedral. Yeah. Interior of cathedral. It's like one of the, the defenders of the faith. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yep. I think it does look very cool. Um, I particularly love the uh, the work on the gold, though. It's got some really nice depth in there. Highlights on the on the shoulders, there are looking really cool, and on that that knee as well, catching a lot of that light. And then I have to ask whether the um, on the helmet, mm -hmm. what sort of is it? What sort of helmet is that? Do you know that style? Do I know that style? Yeah. No. Nope. You know, I'm always going to ask. I, I don't I am fight always going to ask. Your choices, <laughs> your choices are, Gretchen, to, to feign ignorance <laughs> or to, uh, to unleash, thin, unleash your inner armorer. Um, that I fight Blossfecton, not Harnessfecton. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. Uh, we should, we I'm should, getting out of that one. We should have a harness, a harness vector, uh, fighter on, uh, on speed dial. I, w I could probably. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but no, very cool. But I, I love the swirls on the, um, on the lower part of the helmet there. So I'm not sure if they're uh, sculpted in or if uh, Graham has painted those on. But yep, looks great. Nice work, Graham. Oh, John Schmidt. Oh, Brian Schoener. Thank you for jumping in. A Saleh helm with a beaver. So I'm guessing this is the beaver? Yes, I was about to. Leona was about to <laughs> say. Leona was like, I'm going to look this up. There's, there's plenty of uh, swordsy people who paint minis and linger yeah. about. Cool. Um, so yeah, like Leona, can, you can look it up for us. <laughs> Like a bassinet style, but not with a pig face. Yep. See, I was I was going to say bassinet, but I thought I was going to be wrong. But I think, yeah. Let's check those out. But anyway, John's uh, pendulum here. This is a... Uh, oh, what are they called? Uh, endless spell from uh, Age of Sigma. So this is one that you can cast and the, the um, model goes out on the table and then moves mm -hmm. around. And oh, I think that, cool. I think this one's uh, slices through units that it passes over, causing damage. But uh, yeah, looks great. I really love the rust effect that you've got on there, on the uh, on the chain and on the particularly around the uh, sort of the socket of the the sides there. Looks great. Nice work, John. Looks awesome. Cool, Josh Edwards. Painted Manfred von Karstein for Age of Sigma. This is very cool. This is an older Manfred model from oh, probably like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. I like the variety of uh, armor choices they've made there. They give on with that uh, so that bronzy, coppery look and the, uh, the silver and the gold. Yeah, looking good. The uh, green glowing eyes of the, the Nightmare Steed. It's okay. awesome. And of course the, the classic, so Manfred von Karstein is a vampire. Mm -hmm. So going with that classic sort of um, deep blood red for the, uh, the tabard there is, or the, the cloth barding. Um, it's a great choice. Nice work, Josh. Looks cool. I'm painting up some vampires at the moment. So Ooh. very excited. Also, about them. I think with the helmet. Yep. It's a late Hume style, actually. Okay. It's not a bassinet. Okay. The Hume is just the one that's like flat, but the 1500 si style yeah. actually makes a point. But it's like just where the eyes are. Right. It's not actually a f uh, where the nose is. I'll have to go yell okay. at all my Hema people that, cool. hey, you guys like talking and discussing and arguing. <laughs> Particularly arguing about yeah. about what harness is what. <laughs> Come look at 
these minis that are completely fantastical <laughs> and not at all really based in <laughs> history. I think you're going to find that sculptors are lazy people. And they're going to find a picture of a helmet and they're going to copy it. Well, rather here's than make the up thing, their own. and here's the reason that I, I don't care say. about. Um, <laughs> so, a helm for the joust. Helm That's for the joust, right. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. But part of the reason I don't get worked up about any kind of armor stuff that I see with minis um, is because the amount of effort that you would have to get into posing wise and sculpture wise to yep. make something work at this scale and to not have it break or to have it be able to just function as a mini means you have to sacrifice a lot of artistic things yeah um so like i'm not you could be like same with swords like i'll poke fun at something if it's really silly but in the long run like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. matter. It's for a fantasy <laughs> thing. It's not yep. for a real thing. And I mean, at this scale, you're you're lucky if something that twiggy doesn't break. Right. Yeah, uh, that's that's fair. That's fair. Cool. Excellent. So uh, next up, we have Keith David's uh, Elf Ranger. It's looking very cool. Ooh, I love the choice to do that kind of white, silvery blue hair peeking out. Yep. Yep, that is uh, definitely a good choice. Does that, does that make it a drow? Is that a drow? I don't know. We can't see her know. face. It's, it's a secret. Yeah, it is. Mystery. <gasps> Elf ranger. I have so many questions. But no, looking, uh, looking great. And I love um, also, notice along the edge, the edge of the hood and the edge of the, the robe going over the uh, right arm there. Mm -hmm. The little tiny hash marks. Some tiny hash marks tiny. to give that, uh, that texture. Nice work, Keith. Looks uh, great. Very nice. I love the base too. It's awesome. Uh, Kelsey has been in a Lord Celestant on Star Drake. This is, a, this is a huge model. Um, sort of pseudo dragonish. Yeah, um, I love that lava effect on the base. Yep, yeah, that is definitely uh, super eye catching, isn't it? Yeah, I think Kelsey's done a great job of that. that looks fantastic. You can see that striding across a lava field. Hopefully not falling in. If it was about to fall in, it's got those wings. Yep. To lift up. But no, this is uh, this looks very cool. So hopefully, Kelsey, you're uh, enjoying painting up some stuff from the Dominion boxed set. That just uh, for Warhammer Age of Sigma third edition. I think it's third edition. Uh, that just came out recently. So uh, some fantastic models in that. But yeah, looking really nice, Kelsey. I think uh, that gold trim that you've got around the edges looks awesome and that blue is nice and rich good work oh we have another um uh dark angels model yeah from uh the horus heresy this so this lionel johnson um so the primarchs were the sort of heads of the different space mm -hmm. marine legions um and this one's uh super cool and there he's cutting down some night lords Traitors, filthy, filthy traitors. Uh, there you go, Josh, just for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Lyle's done a great job here. All that white trim, the, uh, he's got a cloak that he's wearing as well, underneath the shoulder pads, underneath the pauldrons. And uh, see that little edge detail that Lyle's painted on there? Mm -hmm. That green trim down the edge, that looks really cool. Excellent work. Very nice work, Lyle. Michael, it's been up this awesome dwarf. Where is this dwarf from? I don't know. But if you like that white hair for the elf. I, I love it for the dwarf. Blue hair I, for the dwarf. The mohawk is something you don't see all the time. And you know what? I feel like this, this dude is ready to go. I want him in my party. Oh, yeah. yeah Look definitely. at that. Axe in one hand, gun in the other, <clears throat> mohawk. He's yep. ready to rumble. With the bore on that, at the end of that pistol, that's going to like clear a room. So you like break down the door, boom, all the kobolds are dead. Yep. I think, uh, like yeah, he's, definitely. He's going to put a quarter in the jukebox and then he's going to go to town for you. Yeah, I think so. Definitely awesome. Nice work, Michael. He looks great. Oh, Mike Melody. 
uh, one of our local friends, um, painted up this Imperial Pilot from Forge World. Ooh. This looks great. That's a lot of face detail for something so tiny. Yeah, this one is super tiny. They, uh, the sculpt and the, the casting on this is super crisp. And uh, Mike's pulled a lot of that out, which is really nice. Um, just quickly before I go into the rest of the mini, painting on the mini, uh, he's standing on a flight deck about to climb into his Oh, plane. that's so with the base that has the little, the yellow lines and stuff yeah, too. got the hazard markings on it, but it's also got that little oil stain over there. Huh. Super cool. Nice work, Mike. But uh, yeah, I love it. I love the, um, like the quilted, padded uh, sort of collar and vest. Looks awesome. And uh, that little reflection on the, uh, the visor as well. That helmet he's got tucked up under his arm there. But yeah, beautiful work, Mike. Looks super cool. Thank you. Oh, Nick has painted up this. What is this crazy beast? This is a, a Krampus of some kind. That's cool. I wonder where this is from. But it does look awesome. Look it's at the that. smile. Yeah. <laughs> I would have said grin, but sure. Let's go with smile. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, I love it. And I love that the, uh, that staff, it, it looks like it's got a staff in that sort of right hand pointing forward with uh, a whole bunch of uh, Christmas ornaments tied to it. Yeah, this looks really awesome. I, didn't, I missed this in the group. The texture on those horns, too. Yeah. Yeah, just all around, Nick. I think you've done an awesome job here. It looks great. We need to track, track this down. It looks excellent. Oh, Drew Carrington, one of Shiro's. He's pinning up a... Uh, this is one of the older... Uh, Typhus models from uh, the Death Guard Legion from 40k. It's, uh, yeah, got that really nice sort of gritty dirtiness going on. And uh, the little seeping uh, sort of Oozies. pustules, oozing pustules that are coming out of the armor there and the, uh, yeah, the bright fluorescent glow on the base. Looking really nice. Excellent work, Drew. Looks cool. Excellent. Robert Malik painted up the uh, the Worm Spat crew for uh, Warhammer Underworlds. These are really nice. I've used these uh, in my Death Guard army that I painted up. I converted them all into uh, 40k minis, but these are for Warhammer Underworlds, which is a, a great sort of card deck building miniatures dice game. Okay. It's, it's all of the things. But uh, yeah, these look really nice. You see the, the flesh on the guy on the right. This just looks really sickly and oozing. And there's that little sheen, a little sheen to the armor as well. It's sort of an insect feel. But yeah, beautiful work, Robert. They look cool. Oh, Steven has painted up the Zombicide Invader promo model. Ooh, well that looks like a mad scientist. It does. It looks awesome. Normally, I'd, I'd be able to immediately pick out who, it, like who it would be. Is this, is this? Um, I don't. I, I, I'm going to commit a terrible nerd po far, uh, faux pas. Um, I don't know which one is Rick and which one's Morty. <laughs> but this is what either Rick or Morty. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Uh, or who I can see that. Represents. I can see that. But uh, yeah, Steve, you've done a, done a very cool job there. That looks mm -hmm. great. And I love the look of all of the uh, those terrible zombies in the background. I the believe aliens. the scientist is Rick. Okay. Yep. Oh, there we go. Jason said, where's Morty? So it must be Rick. Very cool. Nice work, Stephen. Last one. Last one. Tim Patterson. Sigma Spurs. Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Warhammer Underworlds, this is uh, this is one of the first warbands that came out for it. Um, Steelhearts, somethings, <laughs> wasn't Smurfs, but, uh, but yeah, Tim's gone in with a uh, a blue color scheme here on the armor. I actually painted up some of these for um, the Penny Happy Little Minis article in the August, no September, September issue. But I painted them with uh, silver armor. So um, it was all about painting bright, shiny silver. But yeah, these look really nice. 
uh, Tim. I think they're, they're very cool. I love the uh, the way the gold plays off them so well. Look at those gold helmets and uh, and so on. And yeah, excellent work. Top stuff. Nice. So thank you very much, everybody, for uh, submitting your minis. It was very cool to go through and check them out. Get uh, excited about all sorts of different things. We need to know more about that Krampus. I think we do. We do. Definitely. Definitely. Cool. Okay. How's the painting going? It's going pretty well, actually. That, I can see that purple from across here. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Nice mm -hmm. choice. I think the, I think the purple was a good choice. I'm quite pleased with how the purple is turning out. I think it looks good. I added some gold buttons because you know if we're gonna go with purple, we're gonna. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I think it's gonna work well with the um, with all of that sort of brassy yeah. gold that he's got going on. Yeah, a lot also, of brass, a lot of gold, very steampunk. Real quick, um, thanks for joining, JT. Have a good evening. Cool. Catch you oh, later, yeah, JT. Thanks for joining. Have a good one. Till next time. Indeed. But you were saying, Gretchen. Um, yeah, I like the, I think the purple's going to do well with all these. It's very steampunk right now. Lots of brass with gold accents. I also painted the underside of his jacket blue because not that you can really see it, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> and it's a little bit darker blue than um, his vest, but I was like, that's a fun fashion statement no one will see. Yep. Um, I think it's cool. I mean, that's that's the thing that's that makes the like a jacket or a, a vest fancy, isn't it? It's the the lining. Yeah. The lining. Get that nice, you know, the, the, co the art gave him just like a plain, boring, brown tweed jacket, but we've, we've elevated that. We um, have, we've given him more. Pumped it up a notch. Where you're like, he doesn't deserve boring. He deserves a coat. He is Gibson DeWalt. Yeah. And he, he deserves a real coat. Yep. Very cool. He makes things. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'm going to take a little break from painting and do some assembly. All right. So I'm going to assemble one of these uh, Davis, and I need to know which one I should assemble. So I'm going to hold up the three cards. Should I go for uh, David number one? Number two in the middle here, or number seven? Uh, number seven? No, number three <laughs> over here with the uh, top hat. I'm a kind Which of. The, does go? the one with the top hat have a bird beak? Uh, he just has just a just pointy nose. nose. They they all have pointy noses. But uh, I was gonna say if that's a plague mask, I say go with yeah. the plague mask. But actually, so I guess we should go from left to right as it appears on screen. So uh, this one will be number one. The one in the middle is number two, and this one will be number three. So put your votes in now. James is two. Oh, sorry, Brian, I switched it around on you. So this is now, this guy with the hat is now number one. So number one is this guy. Oh, I can probably put that on screen real quick. Yeah? It's funny moving the cards around just by looking at the screen and not looking in my hands. I'm <laughs> completely back to back to front. Hat. Uh, we've got two for. Well, we've got Brian for hat. We've got Jason and James for number two. It's a thin festa. But okay, so down to these two. Nope. Nope. There we go. <laughs> Down to these two. The final countdown. Hat, no hat. Hat, no hat. Everybody else gonna vote? Who wants it? 
the moment it's moving towards the no hat leona which one? Oh, Chenrix says hat sean says hat got in quick okay hat it is oh roger says no hat james says no hat well james you already said no hat so can't count that <laughs> okay. I'm going to go for hat. Woo. I know. Terrible. Woo. Hat. I was going to say hat. You were going to say hat? I was going to say hat. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to start clipping out the pieces. Um, so we have some clippers here, which. Um, so these clippers have a bevel on both sides of the blade. So they're not quite uh, side cutters. Um, my suggestion when you're looking for a pair of clippers is if you can get those sort of side cutters where they only have the bevel on one side of the blade and it's flat on the other side, it means you can get really close up to the, to the mini when you're clipping. We had one. We had some? Yeah. But they disappeared? Mm. That happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Might have happened in the move. Yeah. That's cool. So I'm going to clip out all the parts. Um, so yeah, the, the stuff we were talking about before was, uh, we were talking about Malifaux minis. Um, they have a reputation for having lots of tiny parts. Um, then sometimes you go, why, why is the beard separate? Or why is that Chihuahua's, uh, zombie Chihuahua's ear separate? Um, choices were made. Choices were made, exactly. But uh, thankfully these um, Davis don't have a lot of tiny pieces. They're all fairly straightforward. I mean, this guy is, he's six pieces in total. Um, I think this, the, uh, had we gone with um, the no hat guy, he was only four pieces. I probably should have done that. But, <laughs> um, yeah, but I, We've talked about that before, and how some of them have tiny pieces. Thankfully, no, uh, there's no tiny pieces on these ones. But I did uh, send Leona a photo of a Games Workshop model that I put together recently that had a tiny piece to it that was kind of like, um, why? Why would you do that? So I'm not sure if you have that photo ready, Leona. Bring it up, and there we go. Is that a ponytail? No, that's a squid. Mm hmm. What is? Is that a squid a or squid, hair? A squid sitting on his head. It's a piece. Of, it's it's I hair. I can't it's see. It's hair. I can't. It's squid. It's 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 octopus shaped hair. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's this is from the uh, the latest um, the Gaunt's Ghost uh, box set that they released. Um, six awesome, awesomely detailed minis uh, representing characters from uh, my favorite sci-fi uh, book series uh, but yeah I, I just couldn't normally though that would be those hair strands would be down and they'd be sculpted against the face but yeah. for some reason they, they weren't they, they do stand out a little bit as if they're sort of fleshing out but um, yeah cutting those out and then I made the mistake and I cut uh, too much of the, the little pad of hair off you gave didn't. him a haircut? Well, it was an accidental haircut. So when I then glued it in, it was like, oh, there's a little gap in his hair. No. So I had to go and fill it in with some putty. But I just wanted everybody to know that sometimes Games Workshop goes down the same path. <laughs> Spectacular mini. And I'll show you all when I painted it. But <laughs> it was just, why? I was like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> so fun stuff, though. But yeah. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, as we said before, um, I'm not sure if you can zoom in a little bit, Leona, and see there on the feet, at the bottom of the feet there, we've got those the little nubs from when we cut the, the sprue off. So I'm just going to take the knife and do it like this. Um, I saw a fantastic video. Who did the video? I can't remember. But it was about um, like stop being a stop cutting like a child. 
and it's like when, when somebody was like doing uh, on one of their uh, videos where they were cleaning or on all their videos where they were cleaning up miniatures they were cutting towards themselves like this oh no and apparently Roy was like oh poor knife uh, poor safety skills there you should cut away from yourself and uh, they then wanted to explain that yes while you're young and you're learning how to like control your body if you're using a sharp instrument you should cut away but once you've learned how to control your body and that sort of thing you it's much safer actually to to cut towards yourself like this because I've got my fingers anchored and I know exactly how much pressure I'm going to be putting on it um, so it's just about being, uh, okay. being careful when you do it yeah you don't want to be hang hacking into it but uh, yeah so you can go and clean off mold lines like that or one other way that you can clean off mold lines um, which are they're an unfortunate part of any sort of injection molding process but you can just take the uh, the back of your knife blade scrape it along the mold line and then I'll get rid of that or you can use the the blade side it'll get a little bit quicker but it will dull the blade a little bit quicker or you can just come along and slice off that so a lot of different ways to do it with a knife you just got to be super careful and if you have had an incident in the past where you have cut yourself badly with a knife files files are a good way to do it so we'll just uh, cut him there so it's just a matter of trimming those out of the way. Um, more and more often, um, designers are able to put those um, vent points on areas that will be covered up by something else. Um, or even connect to... So doing them on the bottom of the feet means they're going to connect to the base. So you don't have to worry about uh, them showing in too many places. Uh, some designers get really super clever and they can hide those um, mold lines as well. So you don't have to do a lot of cleanup, which is nice. But uh, trimming up those things can be can be important. There'd be some areas where if you don't clean them up, it can be tough to put the, the pieces together. So I'll just clean up like that and then here we go on the side of the side of the hat. Not exactly the spot that I would have expected, but yeah, if you are going to work with a file, best file to get was a small half round file. So you have a flat side for flat surfaces and a curved side for like filing curved surfaces like this uh, inside of the hat there or the side of the hat. So yeah, quickly. We don't have any uh, polystyrene cement here, so um, I'm just going to use some super glue, just quickly. Some uh, Bob Smith Industries super glue from our friends at Titan Games and Hobbies, just down the street. Uh, put a few dabs of uh, super glue on. I'm not going to put too much on because um, I want it to be able to dry pretty quickly, but. Uh, yeah, the way that this guy is, um, has been cut up to be put on the sprue is all is very cool. You can see a lot of um, little tabs that will uh, mean that you'll put things in the right place. I did just notice a mold line that I missed down the side. And yeah, if you put too much uh, too much glue on, it's going to take a little. A little while for everything to to dry, so you're going to have to be super careful with uh, where you put the or how you hold onto it as you're uh, putting it all together. That's one thing you don't want to have is loads of glue sort of oozing out of those gaps. Um, one thing you can do if you're using polystyrene cement is put a little bit of extra glue. And then when you squeeze it, you'll get a bead along the edge there. And you can let that completely uh, cure and then come back with a file and file it down and, and lose that seam line that'll disappear under it. 
but uh, now putting the arms in place. Put those two in first. Oh. Ah. I'm glad you're getting my fumbling on uh, <laughs> on the internet. There we go. Put that in place there. Um, one thing that you might find that sometimes happens with uh, when you're using super glue is that you'll get a little bit sort of stray piece of super glue and you'll end up with a little bit of a fingerprint mark in super glue on the model. Just let it let it dry completely and then come back with that file and file it down. Okay. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is glue him to the base. And then put the final thing I'll do is put the hat on. I think this guy's just about done. Yeah? Yeah. Excellent. I think if I if I go too much more, then I will overdo it. Yeah. Yep. Don't don't overdo it. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it and call it there. My goodness. Still got 20 minutes to go. Oh no. Do you want to paint one of these surveyors? I could. Here we go. Actually, if you want to finish off that guy that I started <laughs> a few weeks ago. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Just flick him. Flick him. Just, yeah, you fine. flick him like a... Was it Pogs that you used to yeah. flick? Or are they... I did. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, I can put him... Yeah. This guy's ready to rock and roll. He's like running. Okay. And now I'm just holding the uh, his head on. Oh look, you're almost blocking too. <laughs> Should try harder. Okay, so there we go. He's got his hat on. I love the face on this guy. It's very um, HP Lovecraft inspired. <laughs> sure, the classic sort of caricature of Lovecraft. So this guy yeah. has like the weird rock hands. Yeah, oh, he does. But yeah, so there we go. There's one of the the Davis assembled. Wow. Cool. Very creepy. Vaguely like. Jack the Ripper, like you could just yep. see him under a stoplight, a stoplight, a, a street, light. street light. Yep. Street light. He'd still Pretty be definitely. scary under a stoplight. <laughs> yep. Even more scary with that red glow. <laughs> It'd be perfect. Oh, there we go. Oh, check him out. Yeah, there he goes. Awesome. Very cool. I'm going to... I'm going to spin him a little bit. If that's cool. Go for it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it looks awesome. Great work. Now I'm gonna have to finish my guy. Yeah, you're gonna you have to hustle. I am gonna have to hustle. Let me rummage around for some There we go. Wall of purple. <laughs> so I'll start with that for the uh, the flaming brand. There. I need a little bit of white as well. Okay. Nice stuff. Need a little bit of white on his cuffs. So I did get our order in. Okay. For Ooh. what we're going to be able to, to do during August. To do the witch? To do the terrain box. Oh, okay. Yep. You got some game master uh, terrain from the army painter. Yes. Very cool. Right. I was actually uh, just talking with um, Paul Butler from Gaming Days and uh, from Games and Stuff. He's one of the organizers of uh, Free RPG Day. Nice. And uh, I let him know that the booklets that I've worked on with um, 
which our friend of the show Jeff Hall yes. uh, and Mantic Games and the Army Painter have just arrived in uh, at the Alliance Warehouse in Fort Wayne. Oh, awesome! So six thousand sixty well sixty six hundred copies of the booklet have arrived there, which is super awesome. But yeah, so there's a booklet that you'll be able to get at Free RPG Day, which goes through the um, sort of boss fight room that we built up um, using the Game Master terrain set. So we have to put our thinking caps on and work out what we're going to do on the show. True. Yeah. Are we going to do that for a couple of weeks? I think? Yes. Maybe one, like one week for the building and one week for the painting? Yeah. Cool. I think that'll be exciting. Very cool. Maybe we'll put a, uh, I might ask the question in the, the Facebook group so people can throw in some suggestions for what we, what we make. Hmm, that's a good idea. Oh. I think that'll be good. Oh, actually, I just realized what this is. He has a, um, he has like a walking stick. Mm-hmm. Like a cane. And it's, uh, the cane is on fire. So I'm going to paint uh, some little trim bits on that first with some brass and do his buttons as well. Just adding that extra little detail, just really we'll pop them out. Okay. That and then now I'll do the flames. And if I can close this, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be all quiet. <laughs> it never works. It no, never I works. think. How, do you find the quieter you try to be, the louder you become? Uh, it depends. It depends on when, like how late it is. The later it gets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If it's like noon, then no. If I'm trying to be quiet, I can be super quiet. But if it's midnight, then yeah. yeah. There we go. Does that look, uh, it's like look nice and bright, do you think? Oh, wow, yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Just something quite different from the rest of him. Gives it that nice magical touch. Yeah. I mean, that, that is the nice thing about working with like Fantastical minis, right? Mm. You've got that flexibility. And one of the other things I can do as well is I can mix a little bit of that. Um, I can take some of the, the highlight colors from before, mix a little bit of that in. And glaze that a little bit over that, um, over the area of his jacket near that. Get that uh, <laughs> object source lining effect. And Josh says, I used, uh, so used to living in an upstairs apartment, I find myself tiptoeing through my own house. And James says, I do not try to be quiet, capital Q, at any time. <laughs> it just does not work for me. Excellent. Yes. I find myself quiet by accident quite a lot. I can be, I can be very quiet by accident. To the point of where if I'm walking with my fiance, I also like drift naturally towards people's blind spots. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Just accidentally? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He thinks he loses me all the time. He'll be like, where did you go? And I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> right? Right? Right here. Right here. Right um, next to you. <laughs> but if I'm trying to be quiet, I can't. Right. I don't know what it is. That's funny. I'll trip. I'll fall. The things, the floor will creak. Every cabinet slams. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, my uh, it, my house. One of my my jobs is uh, I take out the trash and the recycling. Mm -hmm. And uh, recycling goes out every Wednesday night. And uh, now that I'm back gaming with uh, with friends on every other Wednesday night, that means that every other Wednesday night I take end up taking the recycling out after midnight. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I gotta pick up this container full of cans and bottles and 
carefully walk them down to out to the back and make sure that I don't you know it'd be pretty good but it's, it's just something I know that I'm going to be super careful about Okay, this is working fairly quickly on the the flames, just so I can get them get them done. And also, one thing to remember if you are trying some object source lighting is that your whatever's being illuminated won't be as bright as the brightest part of your um, lighting there it can be close to it but it won't be as as bright so just keep that in in mind so this is maybe a little bit too bright on his uh, jacket there so I'm going to dial that a little bit back mix some of uh, the brown back into it There we go. I'm just giving him some very nice rock hands. Very nice rock <laughs> hands? Awesome. Yep, that's all I'll get done. But that's okay. Yep. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to go for shiny rather than glowy on that emblem on his shoulder. Let me look at the artwork. Just in case my eyes can't pick out the actual sculpt and <laughs> there we go Good starting point And across there. Yep, you can tell it's, we're getting close to the end. Yeah, <laughs> speeding up. Speaking of quiet. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. A little bit of highlight with shining silver. And then I'll just need to touch that up again with the, uh, the brown. I think that's one of the, the things as well. If you sometimes when you you go in and you paint, spend a bit of time going through and highlighting and shading and getting a whole area looking really nice, and then you come along and paint a detail on top of it, but then accidentally, accidentally like splash over onto the oh no the yeah that's painted. the worst. I was gonna say it's it's just never don't fear it. It's gonna happen, but uh, just be ready to. Make sure you factor in a little bit of time to go back and touch that area up. That's quite important. And even though we've only got a couple of minutes left, I am going to put out a little bit more paint. I ran you can out do of it, Dave. You can do it. Finish brown. Nope. I believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate it. There we go. Just realized I hadn't done a lot of particularly highlighting on his uh, shoulder there. All right. Yep. I think that is going to work. Highlight the shoe. <laughs> get that done. What do we got there? Um, oh, uh, Josh says. Oh, okay. What do we got? Um, Jason says the back of the blade is how I scraped all the primer off my troll. 
So Jason has uh, had some issues with the pre-primed troll. Glad you got it all sorted. Uh, James says <laughs> Bob's glue is the best, so that's the Bob Smith Industries one. You can generally find it in your local hobby store. That's the one I use um, a lot. Uh, Jason said, do you usually dry fit uh, fit first or just go for broken glue? Um, I think with plastic mm. minis, like for Malifaux, they are super engineered really well and Games Workshop plastic minis are also super really well engineered. I think anything that's in resin or metal, yeah. because resin and metal have can have shrinkage, I will definitely dry fit those. But generally with the other plastic models, I'd, I'd just jump straight in. Um, Sean says he uses Loctite gel, um, which is also typically readily available a lot of different places. Uh, Josh says it was midwinter. Yeah, midwinter minis, that's what it was. You were right. He did the, uh, the video about um, how to scrape and cut and that kind of thing. Uh, he said also uh, Squidmar did a similar video. Don't prick like a noob. Or a nub. Did you mean nub or noob? I don't know. Uh, about nippers and knives. Uh, oh, Shadrach said I think Squid was e Squidmar was even briefly featured in the midwinter video. Quite possibly. Um, he says I love it when hobby tubers collaborate. Definitely good. Cool. There we go. They were caught up on everything. I'm going to put a slight um, reflective sort of glaze on this uh, shoulder icon so the bits of the down the bottom here have that little bit of magenta in them. But I think he is done. Woohoo! Okay, should I put him uh, under the. Do it! Do it. Under this guy's not done. I, this guy just has hands now. That's all. <laughs> Put him in here next to his friend, Gibson. I'll turn him slightly so that we can see. Yep, there we go. Aha! So you can see those those hash marks on the um, the coat. They're fairly um, sort of obvious there. If you take your time with it. You can go along and um, make thinner lines. Practice. You can go, go along and do some practice and paint really, really thin lines. And you can paint them a lot closer. And then if you do two or three more levels of highlighting, um, you get those those nice fine lines in there. And just by building that up, that'll give an actual physical texture to it as well as the the visual texture as you're doing it. But yeah, I think it looks. Uh, that looks pretty cool. It's going to be great. Okay. It's going to set his coat on fire. I, I think so. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't sure. It, it looked like there might have been a little damage on the on the coat anyway. So I wonder if it is supposed to be burning. <laughs> but uh, no, he looks cool. I think. Uh, I like how they came out. I like that you both used bright colors at one point in your menu. Right. That's yep. fun. Yeah that, yeah, that purple challenge just kept going didn't it it did, <laughs> it did. Well, it's a great it's a great color isn't yeah it, it really that, is uh, hex lichen that's the hex lichen color from uh fully who's game color range it looks yep. uh, super cool but uh yeah i think when you're sometimes you might get people i think sometimes people get stuck in a bit of a rut and they just go oh i'll just paint the box art mm -hmm. um this is a way that you can see here we've painted the box art but we've we've taken one element or two elements of it mm -hmm. and switched it up a, a little bit um, always ask other people for ideas as well. So I think it was, um, who was it? Was it Brian who mentioned yeah. purple? Was it Brian who oh, mentioned purple? Lucas. Pardon? Lucas? Larry? Was at the beginning? I can't remember. Laser Judas. Laser Judas, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Laser Judas mentioned the, uh, the idea for purple gloves, um, which then spun into adding some purple and gray into the pants as well. So, yeah, definitely uh, cool things. Actually, I didn't realize they had like armored toes on those. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't? He no. does now. He does now. <laughs> they look awesome. Yeah. I was like, you know what? He could use with some more 
you know, we're just gonna lean into the steampunk. Oh yeah, for is sure. Is what we're gonna do. And black shoes just seemed so boring with the rest of his outfit. Yeah. Yep. Give him some steel toes. Yeah. No, I think uh, it looks great. He's henchman after all. He needs <laughs> and he and he builds things. It's called Four, protective gear. Protective gear. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. Actually, <laughs> where's my guy? He has a black mirror ability. Ooh. When model this model would gain a condition, he may choose a friendly model with this ability to gain that condition instead. So he just passes it on. <laughs> Penumbral converter. Sustaining shadows. Oh, ungentlemanly affairs. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of thinking of making these minis um, giveaways for August. Okay. Like for the month Ooh. of August. Each week we could give away one of them. That'd be cool. Sounds fun. Cool. I'm yeah. about it. Yep. So make sure you tell your friends and also show up <laughs> <laughs> each week because we'll give away one of these minis. And I'll make sure to include the card mm -hmm. with them. Yep. So like if you want to play with them, it, you'll have the uh, character kind of sheet with yep. them. So you're saying I should put all these cards back in the deck? Or yeah. Okay. Just don't throw them don't in throw the room. Them away. <laughs> Oh, you mean throw them like Gambit style? Right, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 no. No. It didn't no. work. Yep. Stick, <laughs> stick to the axes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that on the uh, Penny Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Um, yeah. If you're not a member, uh, come along and join us. And if you have a friend that happens to really like this game, tell them. Tell them to join us. Join us. Join us. One of us. One of us. One of us. Um, and they too can win cool painted minis from Malifo. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I think that's tonight. That's. Yep. So keep, keep, I was going to say, keep an eye out for something we haven't done for a little bit. I went and researched the price on this as well. Keep an eye out in your friendly local game store for Malifo boxes. This box is $55. All right, and then you get a, quite a few minis. You do. You get seven, uh, which is enough for a whole game. For yeah. Getting you started in Malifaux 3rd Edition. So your uh, friendly local game store can pick these up from Alliance Game Distributors. Ask them about it while you're there. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> cool. I almost held it in. But yeah, all good. All right. <laughs> well, that's our show tonight, folks. We will see you next Thursday. Where we will be painting what, Leona? Some terrain. Terrain! Maybe we're doing terrain. We are. And that'll be for quite a bit. So I'm excited. We haven't done terrain in a really long time. It has been a while. Yep. yep. So put all your best terrain tips uh, in your pocket and save them for that hopefully not so rainy day. <laughs> no tornadoes. <laughs> cool. Uh, and on that note, goodbye everyone. Bye! Bye.